Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week, brought to you by MeUndies, Pro Flowers, and Sherry's Berries. Sick. It's so, like, <laughs> musical the way you do that. Yeah. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. <laughs> and I'm Becca. And I'm Gus. Jesus, Always. Becca. Look at your hair. Yeah. I love it. I didn't notice All that in real life. Real. I, I just Not noticed really. it on the screen. I saw you, like, Snapchatting over the weekend with your hair down, and I was like, is that a filter or is Becca's hair really that long and I just never noticed yeah, it? Yeah, this morning Sophie came in and was like, I just realized how much you wear your hair up. I had no idea it was so long. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> There's this thing in uh, in some people's cultures called extensions. Ah. <laughs> yes. Wearing someone else's hair right here. It's oh, right. Hair. You, it's real hair. It's you yes. were talking about... Uh, From a horse? No. From a human head. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the human hair trade. I remember that now. Yeah. Okay. Went off on a little Twitter rant. That nobody liked. Extensions <laughs> are so great. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. You guys will never know the joys of it. Maybe they could. We should put but those in Gavin's hair, I think. I had extensions for laser team. Yeah, I was going to say, was your mullet real or <laughs> extended? Looks, it looks so bad, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, years ago, I was uh, dating this girl who, uh, she, like, one day all of a sudden she was like, I want to I wanna cut my hair. I want to do mm -hmm. something different. I'm going to cut my hair really short. And I was like, well, I don't think you should do that. She's like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's like, all right, you know, it's your decision. Do whatever you want. So she cut her hair super short. And then literally the next day, we're like walking uh, by a hair salon. She was like, she looked at it. She's like, I want to get extensions. <laughs> no I was way. like, all right, this isn't working out. I was like, that was, like, that was it. I was like, <laughs> You okay. broke up with her for I that? I broke up. Like, oh, that, was, that was the reason. I was like, <laughs> you are so unable to commit to something. Like, I knew it was a bad idea. I told you, you did it anyway, and now you're going to spend, Give like, it. it's just a, an enormous waste of money at that but point. But sometimes women just want to experiment and try new things, and they, yeah. like, do something, realize they don't like hair. it, so they can fix it. Yeah. No, no, and it was her decision, just like it was my decision to no longer be dating her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That has to be the single worst reason to break up with someone, I think. Is that oh, I've had tons of bad ones. Um, What's the most shallow reason you broke up I with didn't someone? like the way someone ordered a steak once. What? <laughs> like, how it was cooked, or did she say something wrong? Like, it was well what? done, and you're like, I'm out. Or was she just like mean to the server? Um, she was a little rude to the server. Okay, that I understand. But she did not want the steak cooked at all. What? Wait, okay. She wanted like steak tartare. Like, like take Blue? it out. No, like take it out of the fridge and put it on a plate. The fuck? Was she anemic? What's happening? Isn't that just gonna give you food poisoning? Yeah, I, I didn't stick around to find out. <laughs> I mean, you, Wait, can, do you, you can get a tartare, but that's, you know. But yeah, you prepare that. Like that's that's a certain way. That's not like you take a ribeye out of the freezer section at HEB and just start munching on it. Like, <laughs> that is, oh, it'd be, so, it'd be so tough and cold. Yeah, it was. That was. That that might be the the pettiest reason. That's really weird. No, I think that that's a pretty valid reason. Like that's it's, indicative it's, of something else going on there. It's good that you knew fast though. Some people don't realize that stuff until they're dating someone like way down the line. They're yeah, like, yeah yes. it was, that was like a, like first date. It was like okay, nope, <laughs> out, out. And it's not like I was getting many dates at the time either. Like it was, <laughs> it was really like, oh god damn it! Like, <laughs> you didn't ask her about it. That, that'd be no. fascinating. I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, right. why? Why didn't you like meat cooked? No, yeah. I, I was I was afraid that it was going to go down like a rabbit hole of like more stuff I didn't want to know. Like I was already checked out by that point. I was like, you didn't want to cooked? find out that she was pregnant with Satan's child. And yeah. She, yeah. yeah, she likes to taste of human yeah. flesh and raw meat. What if mm -hmm. she cooked stuff like cereal and she just had it wrong? She had everything the opposite. Like <laughs> stuff that oh, shouldn't god. be cooked. Yeah. Cooked. yeah. Like boil, uh, why are you boiling milk? Oh, I'm gonna eat some Captain Crunch. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> toast it in the oven first. It's gonna taste delicious. Fire. Oh man, I feel like that would taste good, like a toasted Captain Crunch. Probably mm. put it in the oven, stick it in, roast it a little, a little bit. Porridge. Porridge. Make a little like oatmeal out of your warm milk and that's toasted just, Captain. That's Crunch. just soggy mess. That's just gloop. So do you not like cereal with milk because it gets the cereal soggy? I do. I just eat it really fast. Are you the oh. kind of person who puts very little milk in their cereal? No, I'll, I'll go all out. I'll just scoff it down. Mm -hmm. And if there's bits that are really soggy, like I've left some bits behind, I just won't eat them. Do you drink the milk at the end? God, no. Well, okay. Wow. So you know it tastes like cereal. You know what you should do? It's <laughs> like, like liquid that's cereal. That's the best part. Yeah. Are you put serious? Them, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's like a sugary milk. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't, put, I, put the milk I don't in first yeah. and then put the cereal in. Try it. Oh, I get it. Just so there it. are parts that don't even touch the milk, yeah. potentially. But wouldn't it float? Yeah, so that's But fine. then it's like you get like a little bit of milk in the cereal. Yeah, milk, like a cereal crunchy. raft. I often get tweeted a picture of this bowl that separates milk from the cereal. So you oh, can yeah, just yeah. like pull the cereal into the milk as you use oh, it. Oh, you would love that, wouldn't you? Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> the ways D to get Gus around would your dump weird me thing. Because of my weird cereal ways. Yeah, no, I would not I would not want to get down that there's rabbit just, hole. I feel like there's a lot of foods that are soggy that I like. Cereal's one of them. 
Like I love drinking the milk after that. Oh. And like, what about like pasta? Because that's technically kind of like soggy. Yeah, but you don't sloppy. You don't eat that uncooked. I never munch on raw pasta. I know people who do. I've eaten like uh, a package of like that really cheap, shitty ramen before, like without putting it in boiling water. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew this girl in college that it. would break it up, eat the noodles, and then put the packet in her hand and just go like supplement it. Just like between bites. eating sodium. Yeah. Straight from the packet. I used to eat those noodles uh, without being cooked. The yeah. um, the ramen noodles? Ramen noodles. Break apart the little the brick. stuff that looks like uh, Justin Timberlake's hair from yeah. the 90s. We were talking before the podcast <laughs> about how it'd be useful to have like a second exit hole. I think it'd be useful. Like a pipe that comes out just below your mouth <laughs> where you can eat just shit food and it just comes, it just squirts out into a bag. No, you don't get the calories. Or you anything. have to deal with it. But then you can have a Big Mac without having to fat a Big Mac. Yeah, and that, what I said was it'd be great to have a second hole just in case you start choking. You yeah. Like open up your second hole. You're like, oh, thank God. Like, like, is there any animal in the animal kingdom that has a forked esophagus? <laughs> well, don't cows have like four stomachs or something? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But that is, but it's, still it's a linear esophagus. progression, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It, but it all makes them fat, right? You can't go straight to stomach four. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't have, like, four all right, boys, send esophagi. this one down to fork. <laughs> Two's getting a little full. <laughs> is that, there's, I feel like there's um, an eating disorder. I forget what it's called or what Bulimia. it's classified as, where people. Anorexia. No, it's not one of those. It's it's where people eat the food and they chew it and they don't swallow it. They just end up spitting it. All I think out. that's part of anorexia. Oh, I think that's a, a method. Mm. Does it trick the body that you're getting full? It, it tricks the body that you're eating it and you get I, the satisfaction. You get the satisfaction from it, but you're like not allowing yourself to eat it, which is you're just not getting any food. Hmm. I'm th I'm, I'm thinking about something we talked about earlier. You talked about Are the. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sidetrack here. Uh oh. You, you talked about the like the two esophagus holes, right? Have you ever seen the? How can I phrase this? Have you ever seen the people on Reddit who do will do AMAs and it's like a woman who has two vag vaginal holes. Or the guy who had two dicks. The guy, yeah, and the guy, that's guy like with the, two dicks. The top comment was like, "Have you have you talked to the guy <laughs> yeah. with two dicks?" There's a girl with two vagina holes. Yeah, it's like you can't see it from the outside. It's like once. Oh, I think I I saw that one where she uh, was like an adult when they just got or like yeah, she puberty. Real, something was wrong. She, puberty, she realized when she like it. had sex and it was really painful. And I guess like the dude was hitting the the lining between the two holes. Oh, so like it's like a vagina that formed and then didn't split and like it's just a hole that's not a hole. <laughs> I, so. It's like have you ever My have you ever drank out of two straws at once? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that so in a bigger have, straw. Did she have two hymens? Did she lose her virginity twice? I think so. <laughs> I've lost my virginity in hole number one, but not hole number two. <laughs> Good old righty, keeping it for marriage. <laughs> oh God. So do you think she would align with the two dick dude? I think hers was side by side, and I think the two dick dude was. Yeah, so well, he would he have to yeah. put his two together initially, and then they could prong out after bypassing hole one. <laughs> prong out. So. Could she get pregnant in both holes? She claimed to have two uteruses and like two full reproductive systems. No way. That sounded. Did she have a twin? That a little crazy. Was to growing me. inside her? I don't know. There's that's no probably, way. That's probably like that makes sense. I would believe that. Like she was a twin in, in the womb and then absorbed. There's no way the she wind. could have two simultaneous. Yeah, kids, one though. maybe one like doesn't work or who knows. Yeah, I think if it's the one I'm thinking of, I think one of them was like a dwarf muted, mm. just mutated Ooh. little. Uterine system, yeah. So it's so yes, it's possible. If that can happen, I'm sure somewhere someone has two esophaguses. I mean, at that point, all God, she could... really wants is the other uh, clit, right? <laughs> Dude, I would love to have two clits. Oh would my you really? God. <laughs> 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 you just like... <laughs> would that mean double the orgasm? You'd be like DJing. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be able to? DJing? Would they? <laughs> would they both feel the same? Would they both fill the same orgasm bar, or would you have two bars of like climax on this one, climax on the other one? What if you're using like two different types of Vibrators on each one, just like brace them. The <laughs> See which one gets you up faster. I feel like this is your dream come true. Oh, it this happens to you. Yeah, I wouldn't come to work ever again. <laughs> like, <laughs> See ya. Sorry. I'm gonna go home. It's a perpetual state of exhaustion. <laughs> I have like huge guns. Would you, would you want muscles? that? Yeah. Would you want that, Becca? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's too much of life I'd be missing. Couldn't mm. really do that. I don't know. Yeah, but what is, I mean, <laughs> is there anything more to life than just a good orgasm? 
Hmm. I don't know. Soggy cereal is pretty good. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to show you <laughs> an illustration here just uh, to answer your clips? question. That's two hands. What, what is the, what's happening? You see the line illustration next to her? Yeah, but is that... What? Oh, the, so it's a, the opening is one opening, but it leads right. to two different... So the dicks would prong out. Oh, see, I so, thought it was two holes. No, she no. doesn't have two sets of lab. Uh, and two, that's why, two vulvas. Yeah. That's why one. she didn't know initially until she was older. Oh, that makes sense. That'd be really weird. It'd be like, man, sex sometimes feels great, and sometimes it's just really weird. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it really hurts. Depending upon how it's routed. I'm, I'm really into dudes with short dicks for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like you're talking with, with your friends, like, man, don't you just love getting fucked on the left side? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the left side's so much better oh, than the right side. Gosh. Oh, so what would happen to her tampons? Oh, <laughs> so I bet it doesn't go far enough in. Well, she could just. Cause do you have to like cut choose. it in half so it just goes like this? Well, well it all would just convenient. Also, she's probably only bleeding from one side. It all comes down one path. Probably alternates. Oh, uh, what if? Oh, that would suck if she had to double uh, two of everything. Like, would you have your period at different times? On different so cycles. You're, like, always on your period from one different <laughs> hole. Uh. Or would you sync up with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, I oh, mean, man. It's, all, it's all your hormones, right? Probably. That would but, suck to be on the blob twice a month. Yeah. On the blob, is that a common <laughs> saying? The, I've never heard it before. <laughs> like, I didn't even blink, though. Like, I just figured you it was know? some English colloquialism. I didn't even hear it until Gus said it back. <laughs> on the blob. I feel on, like that's on the serviette. Quintessential podcast conversation. Never use a serviette. <laughs> What's a serviette? A napkin. Oh. Y'all call well, them fancy, that? Though, you it? call them that in the UK? Yeah, serviette. Okay, it's a French word, right? Yeah, I okay. assume. I mean, I wouldn't use it to mop up menstrual blood, but I'm just asking about a fucking napkin. What dude. would you use to mop up menstrual blood? Paper towel. <clears throat> like where is, where's the blood? On the floor. Yeah, just a bit of cold water. <laughs> yeah, isn't that what why, you do? Why cold water? Doesn't that get blood out quicker? Does it? I don't know. How do you know this? Uh oh. Isn't that a thing like? Cold water gets blood out? It's also not just blood. What's that? What? Some, some mucus and stuff? Like lining of your yeah. uterus and shit like that. Yeah. Tissue. That's globby. I read your thing about like a post-pregnancy one and it was gnarly. It was one of the gnarliest things I've ever read in my life. Yeah. Oh, like did you have a big chunk? Well, no, I, I wrote a blog post <laughs> about things that happen to your body after giving birth that people never talk about or prepare you for. And there, it's just, it's gross. There well, are these things. They were like, call us if you have blood clots larger than an egg. Mm. Wow. So that gives you some perspective on what's normal. Yeah. 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 If you're where having does, a... Where does that end up? Just like... Where does it end up? You wear these giant diaper things for yeah. a long time afterward. It oh. is pretty scary if you get that in a, in a normal period and you're just like, S uh, an alien just came out of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that happened to me one time. One period I had where there was something that I would it was like, this is not normal. Was it a miscarriage? No, I I don't think so. <laughs> How do you tell? Do you start looking for arms and legs? There was no like eyes oh, or, God. <laughs> or Oh my God. You would know because it'd be painful, <laughs> first and foremost. Like Thanks. I, I really appreciate you flying back from Let's Play Live. <laughs> yeah, thanks, so Gavin. Great to, great to have here, you Gavin. back. It's, uh, it's great. I'm so tired. I was worried that you weren't going to make it here in time. He did. He's Just because, I mean, your last tour date was last night. Yeah, we yeah. were on stage last night, and I chugged like five beers on stage too. Ooh. So you I didn't chug them. I'm bad at chugging. Uh, no, I drank lots of water. How'd you sleep? Oh. How'd you sleep on that bus? I have to tell you, I slept great. I might have had one of the best sleeps of my life. We've had no bus. animals. Well, it's other no than the funhouse people. And it rocked. It yeah. rocks you. Good ambiance. Yeah, it's like, and it's like, and a was it like a blackout I... curtain? Yeah. Yeah. It okay. was super dark. Was super it well soft. ventilated? Cold? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was it like really small? Like if you were, if you woke up in the middle of the night and were shocked and you like oh, sat I would up, would you get your it, yeah. for it? There's videos on, uh, I think they're first only, but there's some tour videos we've made. Yeah, I think it's the, the second one that shows all your little cubbies with your yeah. DVD players. McDonald's. Yeah, that was one. And if you're not first member, you're not watching this right now, but there's an R where we had some bus footage too. But yeah, I, I didn't want to leave the bus. We actually, some nights we drove through the night, but arrived at a hotel like 4 a.m. and I just wanted to stay on the bus. I didn't even wow. want to go into the hotel. So... Did they let you stay on the bus or did they make you get off? I think I could have, but I just went in with You're everyone You're a fucking else. star. They let you sleep where you want. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. You could, instead of trashing a hotel room, you could have trashed a bus. It was really fun though. That tour was, like, I don't think anyone was super excited about sleeping on a bus for a week. Mm -hmm. 
but it was a really fun experience. And I think the shows got better as they went on. Some people went to all four shows. No oh, way. Yeah. Was it Fun House and Achima Hunter? <laughs> well, we all did, yeah. Bethany and or yeah. Clarissa. It was it was super fun. What was the best part of it? What was the best city? My question first. I like both the Florida ones. I thought they were stronger because they were later. Don't get fucked Newark and Baltimore. Ooh. What was your favorite part? <laughs> um, uh, just you. the uh there's a video playing. Just the energy of everyone. It was so cool. Like running into the crowd at the end was always fun. This is my video from a uh, Oh cool. We always try to get upstairs into the upper tiers. Oh, is this the one with all the stairs? <laughs> yeah. But uh I mean it looks easy from the stage. It's like, yeah, we'll just go upstairs. But with real human stairs, that's like three flights of stairs You're to also get up there. Racing Wait, the clock. real human stairs? Is that what I <laughs> yeah. heard you just say? <laughs> I'm very tired. I uh, I tried to do that when we were in LA. Yeah. And I had the same experience where I got all the way to the top and I was like, well the show's over now. <laughs> it took me like ten minutes to get up here. <laughs> yeah, I'm running up the stairs with Kovic <gasps> and Ryan. And um I'm worried. I'm like, how long is this song? It's taking us forever to get up. Was here. it All Star? Yeah. Right? Did you do the same song in each one? No, we actually slightly changed the show for each show. We did different heists on each show, and we did different layouts of different games and different bits. So even if you went to a few, it was a little bit different. I think I heard the Tampa one was uh, the rim job. The rim job, yep. Oh, was that uh, Jeremy's? Jeremy's Rimmy Tim heist <laughs> that someone in the subreddit suggested be called the rim job, which was perfect. I saw they were all very happy to see <laughs> that uh, when it was finally called the rim job. What I'm most surprised about is like watching people who were there posting stuff online like videos and pictures and everything like as it's happening it's like that's crazy to me that they're there experiencing it and still like broadcasting footage and showing what's going on like i i was not there for the shows mm -hmm. but i was like i could still get like little peaks like it's still going on and i could see like this little bit of it yeah it's, yeah. it's really really crazy to see it was super cool and doing them there's a lot of downtime leading up to it there's a lot of like rehearsal time and running through stuff and then you kind of just don't do anything for like two hours as people line up and filter in and that's like an eternity and then as soon as the show starts it just flies by and it's a three like, hour show uh i don't think it was three it was over two two between two and three somewhere okay. right. but it was just like boop, it's over yeah like, it's just it's so like high energy for a long time i think that's indicative of like the a good schedule for a show yeah having those interstitials and stuff like that and planned out segments and things of that nature it seems like they did a really good job with that yeah and i've realized now that <clears throat> i don't think i've had a day off since before Laser Team started. <laughs> God. Yeah. And at one point in the middle of Laser Team, I left to shoot a slow mo, which I edited on the bus for Let's Play Live. <laughs> Damn. And then uh, I came back for the podcast. And then I go to New York tomorrow. So if I die of a heart attack this week, it's just because I it's, didn't sleep enough. It's weird. I spent the whole weekend lying out by my pool, like in the sun. <laughs> I am exhausted. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Is that nice? I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> sun will mess you up, man. <laughs> So I don't get you. <laughs> it was a good weekend here. In fact, the weather it was, was really beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Sunday was awesome. Yeah. Yep. I went out to Jester King. Have y'all ever been there? No. no. I, I, I always want to go, but it's kind of far. It so is I never far. It's a hall. Drive. It takes like 30 minutes to get out there, but it's so cool. Like we spent five hours there. What's the what makes it cool? It's just this huge compound that has a lot of good beers and wines and stuff, and like tons of different little places to sit, and it's really family friendly, and you can take dogs, and you just kind of. Hang. It's like basically like going to the beach or the park. Oh wow! But there's pizza and beer. Hmm. Yeah, two good things. It's not like uh, in Dripping Springs, right? Yeah, it's like halfway out there. Yeah. Yeah, like I really like Jester King beer, and I've, I'm a big pizza fan. Mm -hmm. But I still just can't bring myself to commit to driving all the way out there. I'm like, I'm such a yeah. bitch about traffic in Austin. Yeah. Plus, it's not really a great drive if you've had any alcohol. But I was sober, so. I, I drove the team. I took it. What do you mean it's not a great drive if you've had alcohol? Well, it's like a winding remote oh, road where. As a passenger. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, you don't want to drive if right. you've been drinking. Yeah. It's <laughs> and it's also like a $50 Uber or Lyft ride. What, what are we having right, right these days? Fair, fasten. Do you get drunk less now that you've pooped a kid out? Oh, God, yes. Well, okay. That's, that's a subjective question. I get drunk very easily. Like, I'll have like one beer and I'm a little drunk. But I, you my <laughs> I do need that. I do need that. I need it. No, uh, but I barely drink now, just because you got to be responsible. Now. Exactly. Yeah. And that morning after is rough. But my my brother got married last weekend, and I got pretty wasted. He got married. He got married. Yeah. 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 What, were, what, to him. what was the hashtag that you guys were using for that wedding? Asta La Barbara. La Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. That's her like, last name. Her name's 
Gabrielle LaBarbera. I call her Gabs LaBabs. Gabs LaBabs. <laughs> Gabs LaBabs is a great name. That's so good. Yeah. Did she take your brother's last yeah. name? Yeah. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's sad. <laughs> Although I guess Frazier is a pretty there. great. Can you get the, the opener? <laughs> this one? Hold on. Now she's oh. gay fray, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I mean, that's, that's like one of the things I think about. Like, is it's one. So I don't want to have kids. And one of the reasons I don't want to have kids is I'm always afraid that I have to be responsible all the time. Like, oh, I, yeah. you, can, you can never be down. Like, there's there's a life that's dependent on you. And if you fuck up, you go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> and beyond that, like, you can go out and have fun and you have a babysitter and you come home wasted at 2 a.m. or whatever. But so the kid's going to be awake and ready to go at 8 a.m. Yeah. You're going to want to Fuck your die. hangover. Yeah. That's how I feel about driving. Go on. Why? Well, you're responsible for the lives of other people. Oh, I see. oh I see. yeah. If you have a passenger or if you lose concentration and kill an entire family, then you get to jail. Yeah, I think driving's scarier than parenting. Like, you do? Yeah. I feel like you hear more stories about people dying from driving than being a bad parent. Yeah, rarely do you miss work because of a bad parenting accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have, I have. <laughs> oh, I forgot to give my kid cough syrup this morning. It's all over the news. <laughs> I fried his cereal. <laughs> <laughs> the cereal was burned. They didn't want to eat it. <laughs> he burned his tongue on the hot milk. <laughs> no, like I, I, I think about how young my parents were, you know, when I was growing up. And I was like, when I was that age, I had no idea what I was doing. There's no way, like, I'm like, there's no way they knew what they were doing either. Oh, I know. Like, like, like I, They'll I start, act start like they did. They didn't. Well, isn't that what parenting is, though? It's just learning very fast how to be a parent. Yeah. You can't really practice. No. Yeah, like, I remember my parents' 30th birthday. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I was like, wow, yeah, my parents are old now. Wait, they were really crazy. young when, when I was born. When did they have you? Uh, they were 19. Jesus. Oh, so you were 11 I was when they 11 when they turned 30. So you're yeah. like double their age. So it's like right now if I had a 20-year-old, which oh is God. fucking crazy There's people at this company who could be your kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'm always so disappointed in you, Andrew. <laughs> you could adopt team. him. I could adopt him. <laughs> <laughs> <You're the most laughs> His birthday is coming up and he's having a birthday party. Um, I think this Friday. Is he turning 21? No, 22. 20, 22. Oh, 22. Okay. He's uh, in his last year of college, but he invited a few of us from work to come and he really wants us to come to his party, but it's at, like a college campus oh, house. Like, I saw that. I was like, where is that even? I don't. But it's just like, imagine a bunch of like 20s and 30 year old people. We should go and creep on some youngsters. <laughs> like going to like a frat party. <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't want to go because people are too young? I would, I would go. It would be like, like old school. I feel like we can relate It'd a lot great. to those. I mean, a lot of our audience are that age. Yeah. Like, hey, you ever heard of Rooster Teeth? I feel like I, I could <laughs> creep on some like young, hot college guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aaron's still busy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Aaron? Uh, he's doing day five. Oh, is he like in the somewhere? Desert? Wherever they're, no, they're not in the desert anymore. Oh, okay. Wherever yeah, I saw Chris, at. I saw Chris Demers the other day and he was so tanned. <laughs> Yeah. Really? yeah, well, well they were you, in direct you, sunlight. You've been gone. Have you seen the set that they had for that? Mm -mm. You should check it out. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you more when the cameras aren't on. All right. <laughs> you, should, you should see it. And the microphones. <clears throat> and the microphones aren't on. There's so many secrets. So many things going on. I feel like I, I always, I would never know what I can talk about or what I can't talk about. Because I'm, I'm not like Bernie. I just don't say it and ruin, <laughs> ruin it for everyone. Bernie would, if he was here, he would absolutely tell you what the set was, where it was, yep. what it looked like and everything. Show Take you pictures he took. Synopsis <laughs> of the final episode. Yeah. Yep. The combination to get in, the name of the security guard. <laughs> <laughs> that show's looking really fucking good. Yeah. Season two of day five. It's crazy how long that shoot is compared to Laser Team 2. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's three and a half feature <clears throat> films. It's crazy. I think, I, think the, I think they're shooting for like 60 or 65 days. Yeah, it was, was it? No, I think it's longer than that. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. Because it was 13 weeks. Season one was ha like 40 something days, wasn't it? Season one, I think, is shorter than season two. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a crazy amount of time to be shooting. Like anytime I see Josh, he looks like he's fucking losing well, they, his mind. They started day five before Laser Team and you guys started and finished. Yeah. <laughs> like somewhere in the middle there, but they have still so much more to go. They have like another laser team to make basically. Yeah, I think they have 3 weeks to go still. M a Two little I weeks. think a little more than that, maybe. <clears throat> oh no. Can you aren't you glad you're not on that shoot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a quarter of your year gone. Yeah, I don't I don't think I could commit to that. It's insane because um there's multiple people directing and things like that, but the crew is the same for the whole shoot. 
Mm-hmm. So the crew has been the exact same since the start, and they've been doing just every day on that. It must be a dream job for freelancers, though, to have solid work for that long. Oh, yeah. yeah especially in Austin. I imagine. That was the weird thing about my old job in the UK. I was a freelancer, but I only did slow motion, so I would only work like one or two days at a time. Because and typically you don't, you don't shoot a whole movie. They'd call in the slow-mo guy. Yeah. You don't need that much <laughs> slow-mo in the movie. The movie would be really long. <laughs> Is that how you got your channel name? People would call you the slow mo guy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Richard I mean. Hammond called me a slow mo guy. There you go. He's a he worked on Top Gear. So you made it plural and you included Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have someone else in there. Slow mo guy plus friend. Uh, yeah. Slow mo dude. Let me let me read this thing here. <laughs> uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. You perfected your wardrobe, but what about the stuff not everybody gets to see? That's where MeUndies comes in. They're seriously soft, feel good undies delivered right to your door. MeUndies are designed in LA, made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. MeUndies softer than soft luxe undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your own personal style. And guess what? You can save time and money each month with a monthly subscription. If you're not ready for subscription, that's okay. You can still save. It's because MeUndies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use our special URL, which is MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. Get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. Once again, that's MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. I personally go for the, I think it's the adventurous or the bold. What do they call it? Oh, and uh, so I go for the the, the crazier colors because I like to make myself happy. Does Esther like the crazier colors? <coughs> she laughed. I, got, I think last <laughs> month I got like a really floral print and uh, she laughed at it. Well, like you couldn't <laughs> pull them off? No, no, she was like, she was like, you need to put those on right now. <laughs> and I think the... So she could pull them off. There you go. Yeah, I just want to work that in somehow. The, uh, and I think the uh, the pattern for this month is pizza. <laughs> I have seen Pretty that. Pretty good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm waiting for That's my That's an interesting delivery. position that model is in. She has to show the she underwear. Wants, she wants pizza. <laughs> She's like fully spread in there. Yeah. Just relaxed. Isn't that <laughs> how you showing, relax and hang out at home? She's showing them how they fit. <laughs> All right. Did you hear, I know you were on the road, did you hear at all about that fire festival? Yeah. <laughs> like, Just I, a disaster. I, whenever, in the early days when we were doing RTX, whenever I would say I would have a stress dream about RTX or I had a nightmare that something went wrong, that's what it looked like. A like, tent like, the town. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it, it was, everybody showed up and there was nothing for them to do. Yeah. Like, oh shit, I forgot to do everything. And that did, fire festival was even worse because it was so isolated. Yeah, like on an island somewhere. Mm-hmm. So Nepal. and people paid between what was it four? I think twelve hundred was the base rate, and twenty five thousand I think was the max tier. Oh, I heard it was twelve thousand was the was the max. But still, I, mean, I, I mean, saw one hundred and twenty five thousand, which would be insane. But God, yeah, I wouldn't pay that for a festival. Yeah. I wouldn't pay that for pretty much anything except a house. Yeah, I think they said that uh, some of the packages include like private jets flying you down there and delicious bread and cheese. Well, they had like catered. Like an option to get catered meals mm-hmm. by like this fancy catering company, but I think they backed out too, so that people ended up with slices of bread and cheese and like a tomato. So what happens then? Do they does everyone get a refund? I think allegedly. Yeah, but they said they're going to give everyone from? a refund, and then they're going to give them a VIP <coughs> ticket to next year's fire festival. Which yeah. I assume, people, <laughs> yeah. which I assume people wouldn't want to do. <laughs> well, no, I think, no way I think everyone's going to go to fire festival. We know it's supposed to be next a year. Two weekend thing. Too, so oh, I think really? this last weekend it should have had the second. Should we go weekend. next year? We should absolutely. We go. should make oh, yeah, a yeah. round and do fire festival and then DashCon. I think DashCon's gone, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Do you they, remember they how many people back. made uh, jokes about RTX having a ball pit after DashCon? Yeah, we couldn't achieve. We couldn't attain the ball pit status. I wish fire festival had a ball pit. <laughs> that would make everything so Look, good. They, that's a, while you wait to board your tank. private plane, yeah. you can have thirty minutes in the ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I mean, it's terrible. Doing events is really difficult. And I don't know, like, what bullshit excuses they came up with about there being a storm or, like, they, they said that it was an isolated area, so it was difficult to get everything done. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. I mean, yeah. I don't understand why people were making fun of the attendees. Though. I don't get that, yeah. Because, I yep. mean, oh, there's the cr- oh, catered there meal. Go. Yeah. That I was talking Love about. Love that yeah, room the, temperature pe- cheese. People <laughs> took, like, a pleasure in that. I think it's because, I mean, these are people who spend a lot of money. It's, it's you know, so the, the it, seemed, fun it seems of them frivolous. Oh, okay. Like, like why would you spend twelve thousand dollars on a festival? Even I can admit that that's a little crazy. And the but. lineup was shit too. I mean, it was like all four I know, bands. All I know was Blink One Eighty Two. I don't yeah. know who else was there. Blink. Well, wasn't it run by Ja Rule? Yeah, S- but supposedly. I don't even know if he was performing. Somebody? He, I think he was partnered with the 
I know he had like some sort of official involvement with the show, but I don't know if he was performing either. Yeah. It was like Blink-182, I know Disclosure was supposed to DJ oh, right. and like Major Laser, and then it was just a bunch of random Is it things. just a bunch of people who wanted to go to Coachella? I think so. And could it? I mean, I think it sounds it sounds like an awesome idea, right? Like you could go and be on a private island with like super rich elite people on your private jets, right? Yeah, like, like if you kind, look kind at like it as a off. vacation, right? That it doesn't seem that ex- exorbitant, but, but it's then, still it's still yeah. pretty ridiculously yeah. priced. It's so, so crazy how people just like different things. Yeah, I would pay to not go to that. Yeah, that sounds great. Even if it went well, I hate not festivals. My thing. I'll, I'll make sure you don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I had n- I had never even heard of it. I didn't know yeah, that it was either. something. That was I don't happening. think it was on anyone's radar until it blew up. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I woke it's up. Good marketing. I woke up whatever that was, like Saturday morning or whatever, and like all the tweets I saw were like, "If you're not following the hashtag Fire Festival tweets, you need to do that." There right was some now. good Schadenfreude in those tweets. Yeah. There sure. was. Yeah, there was some good stuff, but following that hashtag was a nightmare because it was just so active. Mm-hmm. That you'd like load it up if you have tweet tech, you could load up a hashtag um column and it would just be like <laughs> like you couldn't read anything unless you like paused it somewhere. Mm-hmm. But it was just it was crazy. Yeah, Michael knew someone who went. It was like a really? girl he went to high school with and he, he sent me a screenshot of a post she made where she was like, We're okay, we're stuck in Miami, just trying to get home. Like I really want to pick her brain and find out like how'd you find out about this? How what was the process like? Yeah. Were there any red flags? Like what was your expectation? Yeah. Did you see, I think it was, it might have been Meg who retweeted a story that someone wrote up about their experience working for Oh, Fire I saw Festival. that. Yeah, they're like the event planner, like the Oh, and something person. about like not signing an NDA? Yep. Right, yeah. I think I read that too. I think it was on Reddit. And who, who knows? I don't think there was any way to like verify that that person actually did anything they said they did. But right. But some of the stories were, were a little crazy, like bands not being paid or... yeah. And then I think what was the figure like three million or maybe fifty million? It was some insane amount to pull oh, it, it was off. Fifty, I think, fifty yeah. million dollars to put on the event. Yeah. Yeah, they, that's what they realized. And they were like, "Don't worry about end. it. We've got some like super elite backer that is anonymous. They'll make it happen." But, they, they yeah, <laughs> fifty damn million dollars. That's almost as much as RTX. Yeah, RTX <laughs> is uh, it's like fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> On their promo video, it was like, on the brink of impossible. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fell the wrong way there. Yeah, yeah it's like, if you, if you can try to plan for very difficult, impossible things, but then you need to hire people and you need to fucking work at it in order to execute on it. You can't just be like, oh, we're going to do the impossible because we're awesome. Like, well, you need to find awesome people to work on it. There must have been a point work on it. right before it started where clearly none of it was going to come together. And the guy, in, or whoever was in charge, <laughs> must have been like... I could pull the plug right now, or I could just see what happens. Yeah, right. that's what they said. It was like, "Fuck it, let's do it and be legends." Yeah, yeah. I said that. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're legends for the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone like, knows it's about like being the festival infamous. Now. Why? Why would you do that? Why not cancel it? Like, yeah. why? It's yeah. one thing to have a shitty on festival plane? like in San Diego, where you can just go somewhere else. But this is like they're held captive on this yeah. island. Yeah. They're wasting so many hours of people's time combined. Because oh, what would you do if? All of the exhibitors for RTX backed out with a, a week before the event. Again, this is my nightmare. <laughs> like this is what I would wake up. But you don't in do that anymore. Uh, I, do you still have the dreams? No, oh. thank God. Um, yeah. If everyone, I don't know. I mean, we'd probably. It, if it happened this year, like the week ca- before, we'd have to cancel it. Nah, we just do more panels. What? <laughs> you can't do, do enough. You cannot physically do enough. You, th- you don't think we could program like but a everyone weekend? Just like main stage became the panel area. Everyone has Center already stage. booked their flights. Sorry. And their hotels and everything. And some flights are not refundable. Oh, fuck. I don't yeah. know. That's a... <laughs> I could, that's like, a bad problem. you get anxious yeah. just thinking about it. I, I would curl up and die. <laughs> I used to have stress dreams, too, about RTX all the time. But mine were not exhibitor related. They were always programming related. Like, oh, I forgot to tell anybody they were doing panels. And I forgot to make a panel schedule. Well, I hope there's some good exhibitors here. Like I had that dream almost every single night leading up to RTX, a couple yeah. years in a row. I would have it where like I'd be like at the door, you know, to for some reason because I was opening the door, let people in. <laughs> I'd be at the door like, the like to let people in and be like, Why am I letting them in? There's nothing in here. <laughs> <laughs> like I should I should this have put fire stuff festival. in this room. <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh, uh, Patrick saying the quote from Jaw Rule is I truly apologize, as this is not my fault, in caps, but I'm taking responsibility. I'm deeply sorry to everyone who was inconvenienced by this. What does that mean? They take responsibility? I don't know what that means. 
Why would he take responsibility if he's He'll not be the fall guy? Oh. It, oh was there a ball God. pit? No, I think that's photoshopped. Okay. Or is it? <laughs> there was one. There was a ball Yeah, the, the <laughs> lightning's right. Look at the shadow. I guess, yeah. That's well done. It looks like the ball pit from Dashcon. Maybe nice. it's that's the same cool tent. It actually does look like a photoshop. Is that real? <laughs> is that seriously real? I don't know. I feel like uh, there's a lot of fake stuff flying around. Fake news, you would say? You would say. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? So, yeah, I think the tents were actually like refugee tents or like some kind of like disaster relief surplus. <laughs> yeah. FEMA tents? With the bags, they were? body bags? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, didn't, I don't think I saw any photos of the inside. It looked like the, there was people who were at those tents who had been evacuated from somewhere. That's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a natural disaster. Yeah. Do you think they did a survey at the end? Probably. I wonder if anyone had a good time. Like, if, if there was anyone there who was like, I let's bet, make the most of it. I bet there are people who met on that trip who fell in love and are going to get married. I'm going to call their baby be fire. at least one couple. With a Y. Like, they can bond <laughs> over the shitty experience they had. Well, because, like, if you're stranded out there for a couple days, is that yeah. what they were up there? Like, got to keep warm somehow. Or just, like, there's, what are you going to do but fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do but fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> So you, uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of like if you're bored. It's a good I feel thing like your do. mind is way more sexual than most people here. It's like, how can I have an orgasm as soon as possible? Yeah. And then let me think about other things below that. <laughs> That's priorities. <laughs> you, gotta, you know, you people gotta, like, like food, water, shelter. Like, are you thinking about your next little Jeff? Yeah, I got my my porn loaded up on my phone, ready to go. No, com no further comment from Gab. Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not that much of a fiend. <laughs> I love that image that people post on the internet sometimes showing like how when cell phones were introduced, the big thing was always to make them smaller and smaller and smaller. Like until you got to the point where you could actually watch porn on a phone and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> again. Like the screen size increased again. Yep. Once you, once you actually do something useful. Do any phones project video yet? I think there are attachments for like one of the Motos, like the Moto X, that can do projector. That's pretty cool. But I think the problem is that it drains your battery. Mm. Yeah. Everything does. But, but project, you know what I mean. Projectors use a, would use a lot of battery. Does it, yeah. Snapchat drain your battery like it does mine? Yeah, it runs a lot of background services and okay. location stuff. Yeah, Snapchat, just more than anything, I turn it on, I could be at like, 15% and my phone will just die the second I open Snapchat. Wasn't wasn't Uber doing a thing where it was tracking users after the app had been deleted or something? Yeah. Recently? They, uh, they got in a little bit of trouble for that. And Tim Cook was like... He uh, like called their -uh. CEO to the principal's office. Like he called their CEO <laughs> to meet with him. Yeah. To, to get Tim Cook's like, you want me to remove Uber from the app, the app store? It'd be fucking huge. <laughs> I've got... Uh, I've... I've, I've I think we're finally at a point. I saw a rumor that Uber and Lyft are close to coming back to Austin finally. Oh, what? yeah? I saw someone. I don't even want them back. Someone tweeted, or not they didn't tweet. Someone posted on the Austin subreddit that they got a text message from Lyft, because uh, they used to be a former driver, a text message saying that they needed to like refill out their paperwork because they would be coming back soon. I feel like that would be bigger, like bigger news, because there was a lot of people who drove for Uber and Lyft in this city. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be more widely well, known. I think the uh, the legislation may have passed the state of Texas legislature where cities can no longer ban or can no longer override ride sharing companies. I saw something about that. Which is what people expected when Uber and Lyft left. They expected that instead of fighting at the Austin city level, they would just fight at the state level. Yeah. And get it so that nobody, no, no other city can do the same thing. Okay. So it, I think I think it's going to come back. I hope so. The only reason I miss them is it's, they were so much cheaper than the alternatives we have now. Yeah. I also I also felt like I could always get an Uber or Lyft, whereas now, if I use one of the other rideshare apps, I feel like I can't always get a car. Really? That's happened to me a few <clears throat> times where either the app was broken or they're like, no cars available. Mm. That happened initially, like when they first came out, because I remember it was Blaine's birthday. Mm -hmm. We were all out and none of us could get cars. It was yeah. horrible. There's also a night during South by... Um, obviously because there's like hundreds of thousands of people in town so everyone's downloading these apps and using them where I think all of them went down Fair, Fast and, and Ride oh, Austin yeah. all went down so I had to and I was out and I had to go find a cab it took me probably in half an hour or something to find an available cab were you just walking around? yeah I, well I stopped at a corner for a few minutes and I tried to like get cabs but they're all full so I tried to find a cab stop couldn't wait at another corner eventually got one walking the streets hanging out in corners yeah 
doing my my normal day job. <laughs> uh, you can they they also have an app, the uh, Yellow Cab Company, and you can request cabs through there. The Yellow Cab app fucked me over it's, one time. It's not great. What happened? Uh, this was f- years ago before Uber and Lyft existed, at least in Austin, and uh, it was one of our Christmas parties that we had for Rooster Teeth. And I had ordered a car, a cab, like earlier in the day. I think it was probably nine or ten in the morning. Where I was like, I would like a cab for seven o'clock because the party starts at seven thirty, and I want to make sure I get there on time. And seven o'clock rolls around, no car. Seven fifteen, nothing. I call them, and they're like, Yeah, all of our drivers are busy right now. It's going to be at least another hour. Jesus. And I'm like, I fucking ordered this cab to be here. Like, what's the point of ordering something in advance if it's not going to show up on time? And they're like, Yeah, I wonder if they don't get the the scheduled order. It just sort of like puts it in. It just pops up. Yeah. Oh yeah, it probably just puts you in the queue with everyone else. It was just really because it was raining that day too, so probably a lot of people were getting cabs. And I just called a different company, and they sent a cab over right away. At the same time as the other cab arriving at my apartment, and Awkward. I took I took the one that I just called, and then they started yelling at each other, and I'm like, "Hey, listen, you were 45 minutes late." Make them fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the 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 frustrating thing to me is, and and this it it, it kind of happens with other ride sharing companies too, but you know when you like request a car and you can see where they are, and then like how <coughs> they make their way to you. Yeah. I felt like any time I did that with the yellow cab app, like I would be like, "Why are they driving that way?" <laughs> where the fuck are they going? Like it would take them like thirty minutes to get to me. Like they were five minutes away. I have no idea what the fuck they're doing. It's awesome. I feel were... like any cab driver just doesn't know where they're going in yeah. Austin. I, like ride shares, I feel like they're locals that know the terms. They always use the map. They, they always, always use, use GPS. GPS. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why cab drivers don't. It's use just GPS. ridiculous. I don't know, I've gotten. Lo- I, I'm not going to give ride share a pass here. I've gotten fucking lost with those idiots too before. <laughs> <laughs> with the GPS on. I told you in Australia, I had to take one of the driver's phones away from them because he was like, he kept getting lost. And I was like, no, you you do not look at that anymore. <laughs> I'll like, tell you where to go. Yeah, I had to take over and tell him how to get where we were going. I had a funny thing happen where I was shooting out at Spiderwood Studios, which is kind of far from here, but it's where we've shot a lot of laser team. We've shot an immersion there. Mm-hmm. I've shot, I shot the fire tornado. Is that where we did the Pac-Man immersion? Yeah. And uh, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So mm-hmm. I opened Uber because it was still around at the time. I was like, I wonder if there's any <laughs> anyone around. And the sound guy from my shoot became my Uber driver. No way. Really? He just walked well, up to me. He was, like, he was like, let's go. And I was like, oh, you drive for Uber. <laughs> he just happened to turn it on to see if, I, if so did someone you was out there. So did you pay him? Yeah. I mean, through uh, the app. Yeah, but it's just like if he's driving, the, I guess, yeah, he's he getting was driving Uber, me to my house. My brother just... drove for Uber and Lyft in the summers because he was a school teacher. And we used to do that where he'd like mm-hmm. clock in and pick me up right in time. <laughs> That's so funny. Throw him a little bone. I, yeah, it's funny. I, it's like, I, I want, I want to. Drive for a I kind of want to try it too yeah. at some point in my life. It Maybe reminded me of because in GTA you can call GTA Online, you can call muggers to mug people. It happens to me quite a lot. And sometimes a pedestrian just walking down the street will turn into a mugger and then just suddenly mug you. And it was like that, except he, <laughs> he, was, turned he just into suddenly became my driver. It's like, oh. <laughs> kind of the opposite. Off we go. Yeah, I, 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 I forget what the idea was, but I think at one point I had pitched a, a, a show idea here where like we just go around and we just like. We're rideshare drivers and just like giving people rides around. Austin. I want to do it during RTX. That'd be really yeah. fun. That, that was that was the idea yeah. that I had was to do it like during RTX when there's a lot of like Richie's fans just like around downtown. Mm. So would you let people into your car? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? All right. I would let people into my car. Is it clean? On the inside. Is your car clean, Becca? It is now because I just got it washed, but it was filthy. Clementine. Cracked all these cascarones all over it. It was that, a nightmare. That's yeah. why I was asking. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was nasty. You have a child. Yeah. She There's like dog food everywhere. Spilled some dog food. <laughs> was your dry food? Was or your kid eating food? the food? No, it's we were traveling <laughs> and the container opened and spilled and it's like in all the cracks and crevices. It's, yeah. Did you see? Okay, there was this really disgusting video that Esther showed me and I was actually kind of mad at her for showing it to me. But uh, it's this guy. <laughs> Well, no, whoa. Who, uh, yeah, I haven't had a little spit take there. He's, he's, he, he, he's got wet dog, like a can of wet dog food. Like he's got like cheap wet dog food. And he says, I'm going to do a test here. I want to see if there's any difference between this cheap dog food and the expensive dog food. So he's got one of each. So he like, he starts eating the cheap dog food. He starts eating yeah. it? Yeah. And he just like vomits like violently. He starts throwing up like, oh, that's disgusting. It tastes like shit. And then he picks up the expensive dog food and starts eating it. 
and he's throwing up, and he goes, I knew it. They both taste like shit. There's no reason to pay more money for the good one. And I was like, that might be the dumbest guy in the world. Oh, my God. So you imagine she showed you that video? Yeah, I was like, why are you showing me? This guy's vomiting all over the I place. I assume you were going to say he put both of them down on the ground and Let saw which dog, one the but dog went The here. way that he says, I knew it. Like, he was so <laughs> happy with himself. Like, oh he God. uncovered the, the big the revelation. Well, I knew it. That's pretty much exactly what it was like. But I, I, I don't like reading. Like, on, on Reddit, I unsubscribe from, like, the WTF and... Like a lot of those gross oh, ones, and I I, ha I click those all the time. Oh, I know. Oh yeah. God, it's Adam, just the curiosity. Adam Kovic showed me a, a horrible video of a, of an animal. Maybe it was uh, Kovic was talking about it. I think one of the other Funhouse guys showed it to me. It's a zebra running out of a zebra. <laughs> Wait, it's a zebra running out of <laughs> some sort of lake, but I think it's being eaten by a tiger or a lion or something being attacked, and it like, it's just its guts just spill Ooh. out ah. while it's climbing out. And it's just like it's just like flopping out, and it's That's trying to run away gross. with its without its guts. And I hate that you can't unsee stuff. Yeah. I wish yeah. you could. Hey, have you ever seen that video of the hyena eating an elephant's butthole? Like it's a dead elephant. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by, by eating a butt a butthole? <laughs> He's like literally eating it. He's not like enjoying it, but like or anything. like eating like, out the butthole. No, or? like okay, so it's a dead elephant on its side, all bloated, and this hyena comes up in the night. And it's like night vision, and it's like trying to somehow pierced the elephant's skin to get to his meat and he discovers that the butthole is the easiest way to go through so he's like in like rooting in the butthole and he like does something i think he might he does something where he like makes the stomach gases and the stomach lining inflate out of the butt oh uh, this is like a necro prolapse yeah it's it was on like discovery channel it's you know just your standard nature documentary footage i don't like it pretty incredible like yeah, the nature's <laughs> gross. It is <laughs> absolutely <laughs> brutal. I imagine that just smelled horrible. I don't. <laughs> I grew up on a ranch I, where there was a lot of deer hunting taking place, own, so like I know thing. what it smells like when you pierce a stomach with the gases, oh, yeah. and it's horrible. Have you ever hunted? No, I've always been like a pacifist. No I my dad took us, and I would sit in the back of the truck and cry when he killed something. But I've never, <laughs> I've actually never even shot a real gun. I've shot a BB gun, and that's it. You know, South Texan. I know. Even uh, I've shot a gun. Yeah. Yeah, I've shot guns, but never anything living. Yeah. I, I would hate to My kill brothers killed a, a deer and a sheep, like a curly horn sheep and oh, birds. Just for fun, or like you ate it? We ate it. Oh, okay. Did you guys see uh, that giraffe that gave birth? April the giraffe? I heard about mm -hmm. it, but I didn't watch oh, yeah. it or anything. Oh, yeah. I watched the video. Do you, there was an ungodly <laughs> amount of liquid that came out after that deer came out. And blood clots bigger than <laughs> Yeah, they oh yeah. But it was like a waterfall. It was just Yeah, it was like <laughs> a giraffe hanging out and then it kind of flumps out like Jim Carrey flumps out of that yeah. hippo or the rhino, <laughs> whatever he was in. And followed by like a splash and like rainfall of oh, but it, kept, it kept going. Like yeah. it, it wasn't just <laughs> And then the and then the mother's just like, damn. And then the giraffe gets up. And it's just like, was oh, it in a bag or anything, or did it just come out? No, it just came, it just out. came out. Wow, I, I seen the bag split before it came out. I think that's the thing that amazes me most about um, animals versus humans is that, and so many animals when they're born, they could just like, get up and start walking yeah. within a they're a fully functional few animal, hours. Just small human babies are real crap. Human yeah. babies can't even roll by themselves. <laughs> well, that's what they say. Like the first three months of a human baby's life is the fourth trimester because they're just worthless little worms. <laughs> but like they should stay in there a full year. But they get too big and they would break us in half. Yeah. So they have to come out. And then they just incubate. It's like the uh, the kangaroo is prematurely b born. Is it? And it and it's just like a little grub and it crawls out of the vag hole into the, the pouch and then bites on a little nipple thing that inflates in its head so it can't let go anymore. And then it continues to grow like Why that. Why do you know so much about kangaroos? It's Australian. Can't you hear the accent? It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're right, that's, like, that's right. like a weird evolutionary step, right? Like, it's prematurely kicked out of the body, then goes into a pouch. Yeah, because I think the inside of the kangaroo, is, it just becomes deadly after a long... But how does that evolve? Like, right. was there a kangaroo that just gave birth really early, and, and they then were like, it Shit, I need to put this. I need yeah. to put this somewhere, and it's like, sticks it in the... Because a lot of pouch. evolution is like, you can see natural selection would work out that way. Mm -hmm. How the hell did that happen? We need to ask Sally. <laughs> I feel yeah, like that's a, if a really interesting here, one. Yeah, that's a question we. Write yeah, there's, up for some, there's a lot of animals that do it different. Like the uh, the seahorse does all the 
I love it, watching it, the male seahorse. It, it looks like soul. they're being projected <laughs> backwards, right? Like it's it's so strong, it looks like yeah. they're being thrown it's back. Like it's sneezing them out, and yeah. the, <laughs> they just get forced backwards. The best. And most of them die. Have you ever seen a duck stick? It's like a, a like coil. a court. Yeah, well, court apparently stick. it takes the sh the oh, a shape dick. of whatever it's going into. So like you can like a triangle. Yeah, like it'll do a spiral, or like it just like follows the the path. But what different things would it have on. to be shaped like other than duck vag? Well, I think a duck vag is like maybe spiral. I imagine if a guy's penis was shaped like a spiral, like if he's lying down with his dick up and like just like spinning the girl on top of him. <laughs> You'd say he's drilling to her. like <laughs> <laughs> or screwing her, depending on how you want to. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you just then, get like then attached. When done, it's like all right. Time to detach. Just <laughs> unravel you. <laughs> I thought not many birds have dicks. I think a swan doesn't a swan have a dick? I think I think male birds would have to have a dick. You're probably thinking of the the cloaca. I think it's pronounced, which is the hole that birds have that's a, a single use. So mm. Contrary to your wanting multiple holes in your yeah neck. Uh, it, <laughs> so birds and reptiles, I think, all have this. It's a single hole where they pee, poop. Have sex and give birth out of. It's a dirty hole. Yeah, it is a dirty, dirty hole. I looked up swan dick yeah. on Google, <laughs> and the first return is the Urban Dictionary entry for swan cock. <laughs> <laughs> Which is? I'm, I have not read it yet. Let's find out together. <laughs> <laughs> when a chick is sucking you off, and you're okay. sitting down, she has her neck bent 90 degrees and only bobbing her head up and down like a swan. Get her to make funny noises to enhance the experience. Wait, wait, what's the 90 wait. degrees? Wait, what? Wait, read this again? Yeah. So when, she's... When a chick is sucking you off and you're sitting down, she has her neck bent 90 degrees and only bobbing her head up and down like a swan. Get her oh, to... I think it's this way. <laughs> yeah, it's that way. Oh, oh, like this. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta make funny noises that's to enhance rubbish. the experience. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, Google that's how cool. many birds have dicks. <laughs> how many <laughs> birds have dicks? I want that on a shirt. So, <laughs> uh, so real, real franchise fast, before guys. I get to that, Patrick is saying most birds don't. There's almost 10,000 species of birds, and only around 3% of them have a penis. <gasps> they include ducks, geese, and swans. And large flightless birds like ostriches and emus. Oh, dude, I want to see an ostrich dick. Eagles, flamingos, penguins, and albatrosses have completely shirt. lost their penises. So how do they how, do it? Yeah. They just like fart some sperm over the girl. <laughs> fart some sperm over well, how the they, girl. How do they propel holes. it? They need some sort of pressurized chamber. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what dudes do. Uh, in all of these species. They don't get pregnant from that. In all of these species, males still fertilize a female's egg by sending sperm into her body, but without any penetration. Instead, males and females just mush their genital oh openings together, <laughs> and he transfers sperm into her manover. <laughs> they call the cloacal kiss. Oh, you said the cloacal kiss? Is that? Yeah. That's so romantic. Mush, 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 mush. Oh, God. So, um, Barbara. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, what? Wait, wait, again? That's ostrich dick. Oh. I need... I don't Is it like backwards? It. I, I don't know. know. Is it a tongue? Uh, what? <laughs> it looks like a steak. It looks like it comes out... I saw it, so you had to see direction. it. Okay, I don't want it. That looks I don't really want painful. to see ostrich dick anymore. I'm happy now. Yeah. I'm satisfied. That, did I tell you about the video I got in Australia? Dictionary. With the don... Or oh, yeah. Goats. Not donkeys. He's like drinking his own pee. Yeah, there's there was two goats. We went to the zoo in Australia and there was these two goats, a male one and a female one. And the male one was chasing her around and like snorting at her. And the zookeeper there was like, oh, she's in heat and he's trying to have sex with her and all this stuff. And I didn't notice until he turned the corner, but the male donkey had a giant boner that was probably about this long. And at one point he stops and he's doing this thing with his tongue where he's going... Oh, it's just think, flopping around in his mouth. Tell me this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he looks down and then he starts licking the tip of his dick. And then he starts peeing into his own mouth with, with his dick. <laughs> and I caught it all on my camera. Did you post I'm it? I'm still yet no. to see this video. I need to see it. I it's on my computer. Yeah. I'll Anything load it up. That. I'll play it on the next podcast. I need to be alone <laughs> with it though when I watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you told me that before. And then I think what I replied to you was I asked if you'd ever seen Horny Odie the Wonder Dog. No. Yes. I have seen Horny Odie, the Wonder Dog. <laughs> it's like 
uh, the, the, the Garfield internet's crap, friend? but it's a it's a dog that figures out how to jack oh. himself off. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Nice. it's like it's amazing to watch evolution happen. He humps in, uh, his own hands, right? Yeah, I really don't like that video awesome. of the monkey and the frog. Oh, I don't like that video well, either. I don't think I've seen this. Monkey and the frog. If y'all both don't like it, then it's got to be. It's bad. not good. What is it? It's just like Animal Kingdom mm. rape. Is a monkey fucking a frog? It, well, oh, a frog's the, mouth. Yeah. Oh. And the frog just clearly has no say in the matter. That tongue, though. Well, it can't because its mouth is full. <laughs> a monkey dick. <laughs> it's just so violent, and the frog's just like, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it the experience might, did. yes, have killed that frog. <laughs> Again, this goes back to what we mentioned earlier. Nature's gross. It is. Yes. But I also wonder, like, how evolved is a frog brain? Did the frog just continue its day like, oh, that was... My throat's Weird. a little frog sore. Experience trauma. <laughs> his, his throat's a little froggy. Oh <laughs> god! Come on! All right, all right. There we go. It's okay, go but ahead. he is a frog, so it's always froggy. Right. Extra froggy. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah, the, uh, I, I'm glad that we don't have to worry about that shit. I think we talk about this every now and then. Like, I don't have to worry about some animal trying to eat me. I don't have to worry about like, oh shit! After we did the podcast, I gotta go. I gotta go track down a cow and kill it and eat it. Or it's like like all of that's gone. We're so far removed from like the food the food chain and yeah. all of that stuff. It's like, nope, I'm just gonna you go can, to the store and, and buy yeah. some shit. Or you can just use an app and it will just show up at your front door. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, don't knock on the door, just leave it. Yeah, I, I heard you talking about this on a podcast, and I, I am also one of those. I say, leave them on the porch, do not ring doorbell, text me when they're there. Mm -hmm. Then I wait for them to leave and I get them. Is Cannot it, you be just bothered. Don't want the interaction? Yeah. Well it started where it was like sleeping baby, and I was like, this is awesome. I don't have to interact with anyone. So it's just stayed. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're becoming... 18, still. <laughs> sleeping baby. Mm -hmm. We're becoming slow, so closed in as a race. Thanks to technology. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Do, uh, do you feel like it's dangerous at all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How so? Well, just like people aren't interacting as much. I feel like it could be bad for the way our society develops socially. I've, I've, if someone knocks on my door now or rings my doorbell, Meg and I will look at each other, just like, what the hell's happening? Like, who is this? Yeah. Yeah. Because people don't do that anymore. People yeah. don't just knock on your door. Yeah, I had someone knock on my door asking for, like, donations for some... Well, you guys also thing. live in houses. I've had people yeah. knock on my apartment door, which is That's just weird. in an apartment. Weird. Yeah. Especially if the whole place is gated. Yeah. Like, there... First of all, how did you get in here? <laughs> Are you just a neighbor that's knocking on people's doors? But... Something really creepy happened to me when I lived in Montreal. I lived in an apartment by myself in kind of like a sketchy neighborhood. And it was probably about midnight or so. Someone knocked on my door and I looked through the people and there was this guy who was in this like giant dark jacket and I had a black beanie on. And it wasn't even that cold out. So I can't even excuse that. Um, I didn't answer the door. I didn't make any noise because I didn't want him to know anyone was inside my apartment. And he stood there for 10 minutes. Oh, he didn't knock again. He just stood there. And then he left. Did you have a gun? No. Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> weird. Yeah. Yeah, that is creepy. I have a really great story about some weirdo coming to our door. Um, so, yeah, we live in a pretty central area, so we get a lot of foot traffic. Um, but one day, uh, someone rang our doorbell, and we normally don't answer the door if it's a strange person. But Michael was expecting a package or something, so we answered it. Do the dogs bark? Yeah, they go ape shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, our door actually doesn't have like a peephole in it, which is why we eventually had to get a smart doorbell because we could actually see who's there without them knowing we see them. Uh, but so yeah, Michael answered the door and it was a guy who presented himself as going door to door, raising money for the CrossFit games. He wanted to go there. He's like this like super jacked guy. And he starts going through explaining it to Michael and he stops. He's like, do you know what the CrossFit games are? And Michael's like, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. I don't watch them. I know what they are. And he was like, hmm, yeah, you nerd. And then he like kept on going. And Michael was kind of caught off guard by it, but he's like, all right, I'll hear this guy out. <laughs> For some reason, he was being nice that day. And <laughs> then he stops halfway through and is like, you know what? Forget it. I fucking hate nerds like you. I bet you think you're so much smarter than me. Fuck you. And then just <laughs> like walked off. And Michael was just standing there like, what is happening? What a piece of shit. Yeah. It's a roid rage. You yeah. knocked on my door. Yeah, exactly. To promote your shit. Exactly. And Michael like just wasn't saying anything. He was just hearing him out. And he was like, I was actually going to give that guy some money. 
it's like six months later, the news reported on, it was like, KXN investigates. Some dude who went around, he would normally target people in parking lots at grocery stores who would insult their weight to get them to give him money. And it was the same fucking guy. But Michael's so skinny, I guess he couldn't go there. He had to <laughs> call him a nerd instead. So was that before or after you had a smart doorbell? This was before. Oh, mm-hmm. It yeah. cool to like upload that. Oh, I know. I would have loved that. Jesus. Yeah. It's so it was weird. so fucking weird. It was just like, you know what? I fucking hate nerds like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Michael gave him the time of day. I know. I'm He's really so, like, like dry and. I know. When he told me that story, I was like, first of all, you never answer the door. <laughs> like, you're actually going to give this fucking guy money? You tell valid charities to fuck off in this guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, a nice to have fundraiser. Yeah. No way. I had a thing happen on my security camera the other day. Yeah, did I, you see this? I got yes. I posted it on, on Facebook. Amazing. Um, so I got, I got cameras all over the, all over the place. So it alerts me whenever someone's at my door, just like an alert. And I just, uh, I hovered over it on my phone just to see, like, oh, I don't think Meg's. Do I, I thought she wasn't there or something. So I looked at the thing. It was a cop in like a full bulletproof vest with police on the back, holding some sort of like assault he had a rifle. Rifle. Yeah. Yeah, and he was just like. Stepping slowly around aiming into the street in front of my front door Like if I'd have opened my front door and walked out I would have walked into the back of a cop get back inside and I and I was like <laughs> the moment I saw it I was like What <laughs> are they here for me? What's so going insane. on? <laughs> but I guess they're at like a high-speed chase just your visa's ended. up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A chase just I've... ended in front of my house and like four cop cars had pulled up oh, and fuck. they were just getting like vantage points on this car as they were getting everyone to step out and like arresting them one by one. So the cop was just like triggering all my cameras, but holy shit. It was so, really surprising to see that like where I am every day, like every just to see like a cop with a huge gun. They have yeah. it all the time in the UK, right? <laughs> do cops even carry guns? guns in the UK? I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. They're really the only people with guns. I mean there are a lot of illegal guns, but mostly it's stabbings in the UK. When I was in Korea, I noticed that I saw cops everywhere, like tons of cops, like almost every street corner, no guns. Like they were just like hanging out like that, the blue uniform, the hat, and like walkie talkies, and yeah, that I was mean, it. In England, a lot of like beat cops will just have a baton without a gun, mm-hmm. but you can it, it immediately call them back. Yeah, up with tons I, yeah, I of assume guns. they probably had guns in their car. Yeah, like if they need it, I'm sure it's like somewhere nearby, but otherwise, just like chances just there are, to... a cop won't come across. A gun that often. Mm-hmm. We had to get security cameras at my house uh, back in Canada because our house got egged five times. You got mm. egged? Egged over Damn the span you. of like a year. Another one, you'd have half a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is not funny to Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for my dad who had to clean it every oh. time. Wouldn't it just bake off eventually? No, no, that shit get yeah. like yeah. fucking sticks to your house. Oh, yeah, do you remember smell the, like a rotten egg. Yeah. Do you remember the back of your car? The car. That's why I know <laughs> that shit does not. <laughs> Did you egg your car? Was this like oh, we a just, video <laughs> I haven't watched yet? I think it was an RTA. I just had a, a BMW. When I, for when I a while. moved, I left my car at my old house for like four months because it wasn't working. Yeah, it just like sat the, there in front were, of the house. We went to get it, and it was covered in <laughs> eggs. Oh god! Like just they were like covered thirty six eggs on it. It was crazy. I mean, you don't I, know who did it? No, I left it like it was like right next to a Randall's. Uh huh. There so. is something so satisfying about breaking an egg on something or oh, someone. I know. So they were just offended that your car hadn't moved in so long? Maybe. Because you're know. a lazy bum who we're didn't. Just, <laughs> you might have been like bored employees at the supermarket. Like maybe they had rotten eggs or something. It was mostly egg. It was more egg than car. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I forgot you head. lived over there by that Randall's. Yeah. It was, it, was a, it was a great area, great location, <laughs> except when ACL would roll around because some adventurous people would park there and then walk to That's ACL. A trek. Yeah, it's, but I, I assume it's no traffic. Yeah. So it's it's easier. Um, let me read this thing here. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Pro Flowers. Your mom deserves the best this Mother's Day. She's been there for you through it all, and Mother's Day is a great chance to show your appreciation. When you send the 100 blooms for mom bouquet from Pro Flowers this Mother's Day, you'll make a real impression. It comes with free glass vase for just $19.99, plus shipping and handling. And if you really want to make a statement, you can upgrade to a premium vase and include gourmet chocolates for just $10 more. Gourmet chocolates. Uh, choose the delivery date you want, and Pro Flowers are guaranteed to arrive fresh and beautiful and stay that way for at least seven days or your money back. Pro Flowers sent over some bouquets you see right here. Uh, they're great. The flowers are fresh, beautiful, and smell amazing. The only way to get 100 blooms for mom with a free glass vase starting at just $19.99 is to visit proflowers.com. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and use code TEETH. That's proflowers.com, code TEETH, when you click on the mic. 
Uh, Stunning bouquet sells out fast, so order today. Today. Mother's Day is coming up really soon. I think it's the 14th. 14th? Yeah, Yeah. May 14th. So not this Sunday, but next Sunday. You got some of them chocolates? Oh, yeah. Gus, I heard you've been getting your ass kicked. Man, I'm not even just getting my ass kicked. So Mario Kart 8 came out, (laughs) and I thought I was a pretty good Mario Kart player. Meg Turney is a fucking monster. Does she know Mario all the Kart. shortcuts and everything? We used to play a lot on the Wii U. Oh, it's really good. What kind? What is there? Michael's a... really good. He has yeah. like a god-given talent for Mario Kart. There you go. It's all about hopping the every jump. Almost what I I ate. getting them drifts. Dem drifts. It's a chocolate party, and you're invited. Dark chocolate with semi-sweet chocolate center. Hell yeah! yeah. Is that your pickup line? <laughs> the the thing I feel like with Meg, I can do okay at first. But the second I make one mistake, it's over. Yeah. It's all about consistency in that game. Yeah, I make, you fuck up. You do one thing, it's like, oh, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to see her the rest of the game. Like, I can look at the map and see that she's fucking half a course away from me. I'm only just better than her. Like, I can beat her, like, 70% of the time. But there'll be times, yeah, where, where she'll just get me with something and I'll be, I'll be screwed. I'll mm-hmm. never see her again. And then that's the worst part. It's like, you get frustrated, so then, you're like, you want to give up. But it's a Nintendo game. It's like Mario Party, where... The worse you do, the better items you get. Yeah. So you have, you still you have a chance. All the great stuff. You want to be in second you're... place the whole time until the very end. I mean, if you want all the good stuff, you want to be in like eighth yeah. to get bullet bills and stars left. And I right. still don't have a switch. I don't either. I almost got one the other day, but then I was like, I mean, we have a classic. We barely play it. Yeah, I just don't have time. I really want virtual console on this thing. So yeah, I, I just feel like I've so are they gonna do that? I do. I yeah, so they are, point. but it's gonna be a little bit. That's I, the first thing I googled before I bought a switch. So the deluxe. I, I love version, it on on a plane. Yeah, that's so fucking awesome to play on a plane. The deluxe version added some stuff, so you can have two items. How long is mm-hmm. it's like auto steering and stuff you can turn on? How yeah, and the charge life? Steering. Yeah, uh, for the switch, uh, probably I'd say three hours or so. Hmm. Michael said he played a Grand Prix in single player, full brightness, and it drained 10% of his battery. Wow. One Grand Prix? Wow. So it, it eats battery. Yeah. Damn. I mean, like any device, you control your brightness, and you can, you can extend it a bit. Yeah, I guess it's just I'm thinking like long travel, I, although most yeah. of those flights have outlets on them. Yeah, you can also, I mean, it's a USB, you can plug it into your laptop. Or yeah, it's just a USB. Oh, like a portable charger, device. Huh? A Good battery pack? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of those big, powerful ones. Zelda's fantastic for flying. Yeah, that's only the only reason I would want to get the Switch. Does anyone flight. give you shit when you're flying with your Switch? You get a lot of questions. Like, I don't want anything that mm-hmm. attracts strangers to talk to me. No? I've not had any. And in it. fact, I was worried. Uh, I took a flight last week, and the flight attendants were very on it about, like, when they said, you know, make sure your devices are in airplane mode. One of them was like, I'm going to go around and check and make sure everyone's in airplane mode. And, like, she was going around and making sure everyone. I was like, oh, shit. And I was playing my Switch. Were you on one of those United? weird flights like Gavin had, where they were doing, like, the... Routed landing? No, oh, that was so weird. But uh, I was I like, was "Oh shit!" Die. I'm using the switch. She's probably gonna make. She's probably gonna combine. Was ask it a United it flight? It was. <laughs> and uh, uh, nope, she didn't ask any questions. She was like, she just kept walking. Have you boycotted United after their treatment of that passenger? No, no. no. Gus is a frequent flyer with United. He's not well, here, gonna give here's, up this here's the deal. Like, and I, I think I said this on the podcast. Like, what happened was really fucked up, right? Uh, but I don't think it was United policy to beat someone up. Right, I think what well, we saw. Was the air marshals right? Or well, what we saw was a breakdown in in policy, like a breakdown where people were deprioritized and like people were not treated like humans. And I wouldn't want to boycott an entire airline over one mistake like that, right? Like, do you really want to punish fifteen thousand people who are like mechanics and they have mm-hmm. no fucking <clears throat> input on that? Like, that's it's something not their I fault. said, and people gave me a lot of shit for it on the podcast. No, it, it, it's something that I, you a know. A lot of people I, are saying like the CEO's response was yeah, and, and not appropriate, CEO's, which I agree with. His yeah, response was kind of fucked kind up, of a but jackass. he didn't want to. And I'm not saying it's acceptable. He didn't want to claim uh, that they had made a mistake. He like fault. he didn't want to apologize. Right? He didn't want to admit fault. And uh, they they came out the other day that uh, they reached a settlement with that guy, an undisclosed settlement. I'm sure he is rich. Probably. Yeah, I wonder how much money he got. But I, I was annoyed by how after like all of that happened, there were news sites that started reporting. About like that guy's background, it's yeah, like, that that's shit, irrelevant. That shit doesn't matter at all. That didn't matter a fucking bit yeah. for what happened to him. Like my oh. aunt tried to pull that out. She was like a TSA agent for a long time, so she thinks she knows everything about travel. And I was like, "That's irrelevant. That doesn't matter." And she's like, "But it shows a history of arrogance." I'm like, 
No, it fucking doesn't. But he th- does that matter in this situation that he's in right now on this flight, being a passenger on this yeah. plane? He was arrogant, so he had to break his face. I love yeah. how much you argue with your family. Oh my god, yeah, I really I do. Love that. Yeah, I would too if I were you. Yeah. <laughs> in certain situations, <laughs> they're like, "Oh, it's Becca again." Wah, wah. And my brother. My brother's worse than I am, actually. About fighting your family? Yeah. Except like he does brother. it respectfully, and I don't. So I like have my you, one blowout a year. You or bring the snark. Yeah. And I love reading it. <laughs> it's uh, all on Facebook, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Becca's got some quality snark on Twitter too. <laughs> I enjoy it. Thanks. Thanks. Who's snarkier, you or Michael? Michael. Michael's made me aggressive. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was always snarky, but I didn't like confrontation. But he's added confrontation to the mix. It was really unsettling meeting him for the first time because. He's sarcastic about everything on the entire planet. And you I never know when he's telling I didn't the know truth. How to react to the I have no time. idea. Yeah. I yeah, still, would, to this day, like, a very like deadpan too. Stone face, yeah. deadpan responses to everything I was saying. I was like, does he hate me? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Like, my mom still to this does. day, like, he'll tell her something incredibly sincere. Like, no, my dad died when I was three. She's like, ah, <laughs> you're such a rascal. I'm like, no. Uh, seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, like, he'll tell me something like, is he making fun of me? Like, I, I just oh, can't I tell. Like, is he mocking me right now? <laughs> yeah. you know, I fucking hate nerds like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, do, you, do you find, like, you ever have, like, sarcasm competitions or, like, snark competitions? I try. Like, with Michael. Mm-hmm. I try to be all deadpan like he is, and I always go, ah. Like, cause I'm like <laughs> I can't handle it. I can't handle it if you think I'm telling the truth. Do you ever misunderstand that from him? Like, if he's being sarcastic? Oh, yeah. And it's usually the other way where, like, he's being sincere and I just don't believe him. Or I'm like, I'll believe it when I see it. And then it's like, yeah. Oh, your sister is pregnant. Okay. That's yeah. funny. Maybe he hates you, Gavin, because he's afraid that you're going to break up their relationship. <laughs> I think that was one of the first things we talked about, actually. Yeah. Now, y'all like, have a little bromance, I think. Was was it a... Bernie had a New Year's party. Jeff and Griffin's? Was that when the photo where we're like, we're, like, doing this? Yeah. You had yeah. a picture with him. I think that was maybe the first time y'all met. I thought yeah, it was I Bernie's did, New Year's party. I did like him, but I don't. I don't think, think I've ever been to one of Bernie's. Or Bernie's. Mm-hmm. It was. A, I remember that, it was a Bernie's. Oh, like Game of Thrones or something. Yeah. That was a Jeff and Griffin's though. That. Yeah, I think Bernie. that was the first time y'all met. Yeah. It was a Halloween party, Christmas. I don't remember. Something like that. Some big event. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I don't think he was too keen on the curse. <laughs> he didn't time. care. Well, I, people might not know the curse. What is the curse? I think we talked about it last time I was on with Becca. But yeah, every time I came to the US, Becca broke up with whoever she was with. Yeah. <laughs> she was dating. And it wasn't necessarily me doing the breaking up. Like, it, it went both ways. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just... And it was absolutely nothing to do with anything I did. Maybe you no. guys were just meant to be together. <laughs> I, like, for a second, <laughs> a second when Gavin was like 18 or 19, I humored, like, doing the green card marriage so he could come here. Oh, I was really? like, yeah, I'm young, whatever. We can, like, <laughs> I can get that under the Get your first marriage and, out of the way. Yeah. And we right. did have a Facebook relationship for some reason. We did, yeah. Like back when Facebook was like oh, how in a relationship with so-and-so. You remember like, you could even like on a person-to-person basis list how you knew them? Remember that feature? Yeah. yeah. It was really like, weird. Was like, I dated Sean from 2012 to 2013. I think it was down in Buda. So before this office, before this one, before that one, like three offices ago. I just left my laptop unattended and Becca set us in a relationship on Facebook. I didn't do that. Mm, yeah. Sneaky. No, no, no. I, I requested it. I didn't like. <laughs> All right. Well, like, I just like, I sent you the relationship request and you approved it. I thought you sent it. It was from, consensual. I thought you sent it and then you accepted it from my laptop. No. No, what we did on your laptop. I reckon you're full of shit. This was the Congress office, is maybe what you're thinking of. You would always leave your computer unlocked and we would all just go in and post journals as yeah. you. So if you go mm-hmm. on your site to your journals from like 10 years ago, it's just like, I like to lick dongs. <laughs> <laughs> but recently, well, not recently, it was probably a few years ago that now. That was a real status. Mm-hmm. I downloaded it, like the entire archive of my Facebook and I just like deleted all my stuff on my Facebook. Mm-hmm. But it actually lists all the people you've been in relationships with. So it was like Meg Turney, my previous girlfriend, and, I, and that was the only people I've had a relationship with. And the bottom bo- bo- said Becca Fraser. I was like... <laughs> What? Oh yeah! <laughs> Did you say like Dan came that around that time? He was like, "Is that the girl?" Is that... <laughs> yeah. I've stopped. Uh... Dan is convinced that we actually had a relationship. I think <laughs> I've stopped showing my relationship status on Facebook because that's just like after I the, just, the I first time Facebook. I ever broke up with someone, and it's humiliating. It was just that conversation of, "All right, well, I'm gonna should I change my Facebook status?" Yeah. Like it was always yeah. like an awkward 
part of that. It was weird that it always announced it. It would be like, I know, I wish you could no suppress longer it. in a relationship with. Oh, that happened. And then people would be like, like, like all the dudes. <laughs> <and> <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah. No, I had someone comment when I broke up with a boyfriend of mine and it like popped up on people's feeds because it was public at the time. Someone wrote, finally. <laughs> and I was like, what oh is wrong God. with you? <laughs> Everyone could see that, including the guy I just broke up with. And now you're dating Aaron. Now you're the dating Aaron. The guy who left the comment. <laughs> I've been thinking about uh, deleting my personal Facebook account. It's just a source of it's a frustration. Cesspool. Like I have, there is, n I don't think there's anybody on my personal Facebook page that, like, that I wouldn't have another way to talk to if I wanted to talk to them. Yeah, I only keep mine because it's the only way I can contact my UK friends because mm -hmm. I don't have any of their phone numbers. You totally accepted that from my laptop. I'm telling you, <laughs> I did not. I no, got, I don't I, think you were even in the U.S. at that point. I was. Totally I'm was. sure you. I have did. a really good memory. It was a joke. I do too. I know it was a joke. I never thought we were actually <laughs> in a relationship. <laughs> you did. You did. I like how defensive you get about it. But it's a joke. I'm pretty sure we never even touched. Let's no. make it happen. You wore my hoodie make, though. Make, make it five. happen. That was a comfy hoodie. Yeah, I still have it. It's do you really? Weird. Yeah. Can I have it? Yeah. You have one of his hoodies. No, oh, no, you no, were no, definitely no. dating. Okay, so it was at Comic Con like ten years ago, and it was cold as hell in there, and I lent Gavin my hoodie. Oh, yeah. like a very girly I was, hoodie. I was cold. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. there are all these pictures of him wearing it, and I still have that hoodie. I found it in a closet the other day. Don't are get you? rid of it. I want that hoodie. No, you should keep it. It's yours now. I mean, no. forever. It's it always, always. I mean, it's always, it's always mine. It's always been yours, but yeah. you shouldn't give it to Gavin no. ever. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> how, how, how much weight have you gained in the last ten years? Have you filled out as a man? <laughs> yeah, it won't be Probably you like anymore. Ten pounds. Yeah, you gained ten pounds in ten years. Probably. I'll bring it. I'll bring it. We'll see if it fits. Do you have any photos of him wearing it? Yeah. Then you can do like a, a then and now side by side comparison. Yeah, there was actually a video on Reddit floating around like a month ago from that Comic Con. I think you when were everyone wearing... was trying to get you and Joel to do yeah quotes from Red vs. Blue. Yeah, I think you're wearing that hoodie in the background. I think the probably the I don't think you, we've ever told a story while you've been on the podcast, but excuse me, the first event you ever went to. You fuckers! It wasn't me. I was not there. They played a joke on you where they tried to convince you that you had to spend the night in the booth after the floor was closed. I truly believe them. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, um, Nathan is like, that's what really sealed the deal. Like if it had been Bernie and Nathan Jeff, I would have been like, it? yeah, whatever guys. No, Nathan mm. chimed in and, and added validity to it. We're like, no, like someone's going to steal our merch and it's always like the youngest person or whatever has to sleep in the booth. And so they kept it up for like 15 minutes. I was like, seriously, seriously. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to get raped. This is going to be horrible. God. Like, I was just playing out the worst case scenario. You're going to be the frog. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and finally, like, hours later, they're like, nah, just kidding. Yeah. So you were going to do it? I, I felt like I had to. They said you looked like you were going to cry. I, I was so over. I was, I was 24 years old. Did you guys try to convince me to do that at, at uh, PAX East the first year that I helped you guys? I don't remember that. I mean, that not. seems like a repeatable prank. They Probably. could get a lot of people with that one. Not that, anymore. That you event. Were 24? Mm hmm. So young. How old were you when we were in a relationship? <laughs> 24. 20, that was the same year? No, maybe 25. No, probably 25. Okay. Was I still with Josh? Do you remember? Uh, well, I just ar arrived. <laughs> so, and then we broke up. <laughs> so, you just not <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, like, either 24. Quite or 25 the rebound. On so the cusp. quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Josh must, must have hated that. I nah, he went on Facebook. Oh, okay. I didn't think about it now, yeah. like seven years later. <laughs> I really didn't think about it at all at the time. <laughs> this seems like the Gavin Free way to be. Yeah. Yeah, hey, who cares? Just don't think yeah. about it. At all. I didn't so think I had, about it at all. I had something weird happen last night. I went to the pharmacy and I was in the drive thru. And my my pharmacy has two lanes in the drive thru. One's the window, one's a little pneumatic tube. Right? So I'm driving around and a car pulls in front of me, so we like arrive at the drive-thru at the same time. At the window, there's already a car. Pneumatic tube, open. I go to the right, to the tube. Car in front of me goes to the left, to the window. So they're second in line. I'm potentially next in line if they're doing the stagger system. Yeah. So the car gets their prescription. The woman in the car behind it gets out, bangs on the window, slaps a piece of paper oh, against the window? glass. Huh? Bangs on like at the pharmacy okay. in her lane. Slaps her prescription against the glass and is like, I was here before that other car. Treat me next. Help me next. And the guy just looked at her like, what the hell? And then he 
buzzed me on the intercom. I was like, how can I help you? And she got so pissed off. What a bitch. It was insane. Why, I was why didn't she go to the pneumatic tube line? I didn't like you chose poorly. Like, it's not <laughs> my fault. This is just how the system it works. Staggers like that. Yeah. yeah. It's the same with like drive through windows, too. Yeah, or like at a grocery store. If you go into a line with two people and there's an empty line next to you, you don't get pissed off at that person. For getting out of there what faster a than dumb you. Dumb cunt. It's so weird. So now that you like confrontation, did you scream at that bitch? No, I just stared at her the whole time. What was great is when he finally did get to her, she had her window rolled up. And so she couldn't hear him talking. He was like, When would you like to pick this up? And she's just there, like looking at her phone. <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, hello. When would you like to pick it up? She just, it never registered. Like, I like how she got out of her car, banged on the window, and did that. Yeah. And had this piece of paper all. <laughs> Like, she probably wasted more of her life in that moment than it would have to serve you first and then her yeah. to come next. Really weird. She should have just gotten in the pneumatic tube line. I know. <laughs> I don't get it. Or just not be a cunt. Like <laughs> yeah. She was like 60 years old, too. Like, she should know life uh, by now. She's old and crotchety. Yeah. I can I can relate. I so. Can't probably, fall for that. Probably lived in Austin her whole life. Yeah. <laughs> Hates all these newies. All these Californians. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, yeah, the Austin subreddit's fucking terrible. I talk about it all the time. But there was a post on the Austin subreddit a couple of days ago, calling out the mods for not like clamping down against like serial troll accounts. And it was a fairly popular post, and it got removed. Ha uh ho! -huh. So now then there was a follow up post yesterday, like, hey, what the fuck? Like that was actually a popular post asking why aren't the mods patrolling against these troll accounts, and it just gets removed. One yeah. of the trolls became a mod. I mean, that's the speculation. Who is will that watch the watch? The, the troll accounts are mod alt accounts. Oh, oh interesting. Why? Oh. What's the point? Who knows? So I can talk shit. I've had a few of those in my day. <laughs> who knows? Did you guys uh, just like someone who wants to troll people <laughs> that you can't in your position of power? <laughs> Shifty. Uh, here, let me read this here. I want to remind everyone that this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by, oh, you get that, is also brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Mother's Day is coming up and Sherry's Berries is offering, you got it? Is offering huge freshly dipped strawberries starting at $19.99 plus shipping. And right now you can double the berries for just $10 more. Pick your delivery date and these berries are guaranteed to arrive fresh and delicious or your money back. You may think you've seen gourmet dipped strawberries before. But you've never seen anything like these. Sherry's Berries are huge, sweet, and juicy, covered in decadent toppling, Toppings, chocolate chips, chopped nuts, white milk, and dark chocolatey goodness. Sherry's Berries are an unexpected gift that will put a smile on any mom's face. Surprise the mom in your life with Sherry's Berries and her office work or workplace. The only way to get this amazing berries deal starting at just $19.99 is to visit berries.com. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and use code TEETH. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com and code TEETH when you click on the mic. This amazing deal won't last long. Mother's Day is right around the corner, so be sure to order now. Big thank you to Sherry's Berries for sponsoring the podcast and sending us some delicious strawberries. Oh, damn. They're so far away. Rolling well, that's because we're going to have some. Oh, no. Uh, get, get, let Barbara go first. Let Barbara. Ah. Yoink. Barbara and the actual mother. Do you, do you Good any, choice. Uh, Good palace? choice. Wow, oh, shit. Uh, I missed my mouth. Everyone saw that. We cut to me. <laughs> <laughs> go away. So I got married on. Oh, in the box. Oh, oh, come on. He's dripped in the box. Oh! It's okay. It's still good. He's claimed it now. It says. So I got married on Mother's Day weekend. Now that I'm a mother, Michael's like doubly fucked. He just <laughs> disappoints me every year. Mm. <laughs> Does he ever watch these? Mm hmm. Never in full. What? What? Never in full. He doesn't oh. watch the podcast in full. He'll it's like long. watch it. Like live a little bit and then he never loops back. Does that mean he has a first member account? I hooked him up. Oh, okay. The employee just count? Wink, mm -hmm. wink. <laughs> the employee button you could press. <laughs> My mom listened to the first one I was on. And then she asked about Always Open, but I wouldn't send it to her. <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, my parents watch Always Open. Your, yeah, your parents are always watching. I'll always see them. They're, probably, they're watching. Them. I commend your, your ability to like. Keep it real, knowing that in the back of your head. What's the most personal thing you've said on Always Open? Uh, just everything. I don't know. I can't pinpoint it to one moment, but there's a lot of things that I say because I just don't give a fuck. And then I think, hmm, I really hope no one ever brings this up in any family conversation. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, I'm the same way where I'll say whatever. It doesn't matter to me. But man, a couple months ago, my mom was like, I saw the video of you 
Oh. During the charity stream, oh, you no. got really oh, no. drunk, oh, and I was no. like, uh, "I was like, I don't want to hear it, mom. I don't want, like, don't talk to me about it." <laughs> I'm all grown up now. <laughs> yeah, she, was, she was like, "I'm just worried about it." I was like, "Stop!" Can't buzz me around I'm anymore. An, <laughs> I'm an adult. So is she not an alcoholic? No. Oh, where'd no. you get it from then? The bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need? You don't need to get it from someone if you're like, yeah, you can be predisposed. Spontaneously occur. No, it, I feel like you catch it. it well, it is. Genetic, a lot of it is like an addictive personality, mm-hmm. or just you just need alcohol. one like friend or family member who's like, This is normal, and then you're like, Okay, no way, or if no you, way, no, if, or if you're just I like, I think it's that. over like your threshold and your ability, like how much you enjoy it, how much you need it, how much your life sucks. So, like, you think if you're an alcoholic, your life is more likely to, it's because you're, you're trying sucks to, more? I think you're trying to deal with yeah, it's issues that you're having. Like, do you remember that dude we worked with at the call center who just like drank all yeah, the time? Yeah, like his secret, like little <laughs> flask, and would just like drink well, and not nobody like, noticed. Well, then he always had like a like a like a Route Forty Four, like a big mm-hmm. gas station soda or something. And it was always full of what was it? Vodka. It was vodka. Yeah. So, what are you trying to escape? This. <laughs> Guys, I'm so happy to, to be doing this podcast with you. Hey. What what episode <laughs> is this? Like four forty five? No, I think no, it's like four thirty. Yeah. No, four uh, like four twenty went that four thirty five is what I meant, but I guess not. Even that would be way too much. Yeah. I don't know. I don't count. So four, four, I just know we had four twenty. Jessica Negri, right? That yes. Was when she was on. Yes, and that was only like a month or two ago. Yeah. Dude, her episode of Million Dollars Butt that's coming out. I, th- I don't know when it comes out, but it's she is so fucking funny in that episode. Four twenty seven. Um, Thank you, Patrick. This one. Yeah. That's only been seven weeks. So yeah. you don't know what's coming out? It's really funny. It's it's one of the best ones I think. She's just she's very emotive, and <laughs> uh, she plays up everything with her entire body, which is always really funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so she was great on the podcast. Funny. She's um, uh, she's the kind of person who's like really enthusiastic, like mm-hmm. really emotive, like you said about whatever it is that she's talking. I can't believe about. she put a fork in her butt. I know I that can. Was cool. I had to go back and watch that just because there was so much. Hello, blue around it. Visual. And I also need to see Gus Waddle up. Any, any first member can watch both of those things. <laughs> it's part of the podcast post show. Was that the last time you've had to run off and poop? It's the only time I've ever had to run off. Have you ever shit your pants? I shit my pants when I was in kindergarten. Okay. And never again? That doesn't count. Mm-mm. You're still learning how to sphincter at that point. No, I mean, but I was in control. But like, it was like a thing where the bathroom was occupied and I couldn't get in. And uh, I think it scarred me for the rest of my life. Do you like, count it as being sh- nervous about not having access to a bathroom? Do you when count it as shitting your pants if you feel like you have to poop and then you like prairie dog it a little bit and a little bit touches your underwear? <laughs> but nothing, it like goes back in? Does it go back in? It goes back the, in, you but you stamp? still get a little stain. No, you're all right. You didn't shit your pants. <laughs> you don't call that shitting <laughs> your <Mm-mm>. pants. <laughs> no, it doesn't count. I told this story once on before. the podcast before, but it was a long time ago, so I'll tell it again. it's it's actually really embarrassing um it was years ago must have been like god like 16 or 17 years ago i was living by myself up in north austin i had an apartment by the arboretum and um i was on the toilet i was taking a dump (laughs) and my phone started ringing it was before like smartphones right so it's like my cell phone is ringing Someone like, calling shit. you on your cellular right. And I left it in the living room because since it wasn't a smartphone, you couldn't do anything with it. It didn't matter, so you can take it to the bathroom with you. It's like, shit. Like, I'm, I'm here mid-dump, but my phone's ringing. It might be important. So, like, I start waddling off of the toilet. What? Oh, come to on go now. pick up my phone while it's ringing. Oh, God. And I grab it, and uh, it's like, whatever. It's like a, a junk phone call or whatever. Don't, and it was not worth getting up. So I hang up, leave the phone there. I start waddling back to the toilet, I and I see, like, going. a tiny little <laughs> nugget on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> like it had fallen off mid waddle. Uh, and I was like, oh, great. I'm going to have to deal with this when I'm done. <laughs> I have to like finish taking a dump and then come back out and like fucking sterilize my carpet right there. Cleaning up your dog shit, but it's your own yeah, shit. At least so was it like a, a, a Grogan that broke free or yeah, actually a fell Grogan? Off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the tiniest little uh, nugget. Goodness. It was just right there. Like, I think we need GavinDictionary.com. I don't think Grogan's a British thing. I've never heard that That's word. Why it's I've, Gavin Dictionary, I've not only British heard it from right? Gavin. What? But I get, I've only ever heard you refer to it. I would call them dingles in my day. Yeah, dingleberry. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there like an actual word for it? The little, the shit that's on your ass? Hanging off there? <laughs> dingleberries. I think, that's yeah. what I, I think that's is the most common. Feces is the name of it. Well, that's just poo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a, does it have a specific name at like different stages? <laughs> it's got It's it. like upper colon poo. And now it's like. <laughs> upper it's colon like poo. Eskimo word for snow. Developing yeah. poo. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. So have you ever shit yourself? 
No. Like not I've, even giving I've birth. Come, no, I, that was like my crowning achievement. I didn't shit myself. No pun birth. intended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my my best friend was in the room because she's a labor and delivery nurse, and she even brought air freshener in case I did shit myself, so it wouldn't be <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> and it, I didn't. That's like, I didn't need it. It's like a real bro right there. Yeah. Yeah. She was dead. I thought it like just happens because you're pushing so hard. Yeah. Well, you just didn't need. Had you starved yourself I for barely, like a week ahead of time? Yeah. I barely had to push too. Like. I was in labor for a really long time. So when it was time, like, she just came right out. But, yeah, I was really happy about that. But I've gotten, like, dangerously close to shitting myself. But I've never actually done it. Like, I've waddled into convenience stores screaming, where's the bathroom? <laughs> did you did you go, did you park there just to poo? Or yeah, just... no, okay, so I'll tell you the story. Right. I uh, We were eating some really thai, spicy Thai food. Oh. And right before we left, like, my stomach did that little flip. Where you're like, nah, it's all right, well, maybe not. But it was only like a three mile drive home. I was like, I can make it home. But about halfway there, I realized it was bad and I had to pull over. And so I pulled over to the next gas station I saw and it was under construction severely. <laughs> it was adjacent to a bus station. Oh. And so I run in, I'm, my, I ran in so fast that my shoe fell off. Oh, God. And I didn't even give a fuck. I mean, there was one shoe on. And I'm Is like, that how you and Michael met? He found your shoe. Yeah. No, he was in the car, <laughs> wide eyed, like, what, what's happening? And I'm like, looking around frantically in the gas station, and the guy's in the back. He's like, go through the door. It's in the in the bus station side. So I go in, and it's like, the the bathroom is just the studs. There, there aren't walls, and there's a door, but you can see, like, there's, like, a good three-inch clearing on either side of the wall. So I'm like, oh, my God, I hope nobody comes in. So I just go in and, like, you know, I do my thing. I'm like, ah, it's just horrible in there. <laughs> it's, like, open air, and I know this guy can uh. hear me. And I've been there for <laughs> so long. And then I finally come out and, like, do the walk of shame, and the guy in the gas station goes, did you fell? I'm like, what? <laughs> Did you fell in the toilet? <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> God damn it. There was a. Oh my God. We, well, uh, at least you made it to the toilet. I made it. Yeah, made you didn't it. shit your pants. Yeah. And that's an achievement right there. Yeah. We were, um, we were out in the woods somewhere. We were doing this video, a uh, sponsored video. And it was out in the middle of nowhere, but apparently there was these porta potties that were at the entrance of the place. Then you drive in. We had already driven in, and someone's like, oh, there's no bathroom out here. So I just went into the woods and peed. But then these other two girls who were coming on the shoot showed up and I was just like, yeah, I just finished peeing in the in the grass out there. And they're like, oh, you're really lucky. We went to use the porta potty and there was a uh, shit in there and there was <laughs> a smaller shit on top of the <laughs> shit. <laughs> and they're like, they're just stacking them up. <laughs> Building a little raft to a log cabin. When we, uh, <laughs> when we did that, uh, log cabin. the trials Come immersion, <laughs> you know, we were out like kind of in the middle of nowhere and there was a porta potty there. And at one point in the day, I needed to take a piss. So I went out to the porta potty, you know, draw my pants, start peeing, done, turn around to leave. And like in the back corner, like above the door, was a giant wasp nest. Hey. <laughs> it was like, Holy fuck! Like if I had seen that, I would not. I would definitely not have gone in it was there. Like, it was an active it was, one. It was active. Yeah, there were wasps like crawling all over. I would it. be scared that one would be in the toilet and like sting me in my cooch. Yep. Luckily, I was standing, but still had my dick out. Yeah. In a room full with uh with Do you wasps. Think about how swollen your dick could have gotten. Hmm. First time for everything. <laughs> Get that swole dick. That's good. Cool. <laughs> all right. Well, it's about time to wrap up here after Becca's great start. I don't think we can do anything to top that. Uh, so thanks everybody for watching. Let's People should check out one. the uh, Try Hard podcast after this. Uh, yeah, yeah. seven yeah. o'clock. Have Try you been hard. animated yet, Becca? No. That's a great first one. Okay, yeah. get on it. We should animate that one. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs>